name was, uh, who was the sinus cure of all the males, as he was a very, very uh, confident, uh, crisp, uh, academically uh, strong mm. woman, rather like the sort of uh, women political, political commentators you get on the BBC. And she was reporting on the uh, the Italian Communist Party, which was all the rage at the time, uh, because unlike the PCF, which was firmly Stalinist, Maurice Torres, the leader of the PCF, was a Stalinist and continued to praise Stalin even after his denunciation. Uh, however, okay. the PCF had the exciting uh, Togliatti, I think his name was, who was uh, getting into uh, the uh, sort of more flexible uh, communism in order to perhaps form up with the Socialist Party to get into power. Uh, yes. We also had uh, another colleague, I think, R5 Com 1, I think his name was Tony Milne. His name was certainly Milne, and his brother was in the office. Uh, both of them were to be dismissed or, re or resigned, or left the service, a nice way of putting it, many years later, uh, because of some... Uh, shadow of the cast over their career in some way uh, by the um, um, oh goodness gracious what's his name uh, the Philby affair oh. um, so that that was my desk life I fell in uh, at lunch I uh, must say the 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 the, carte, the, the canteen of uh, the Broadway house was really rather like a school canteen and sort of had a persistent mm. smell of cooked cabbage about it. Uh, but I fell in with a, with a group at lunch. Quite how I did, I don't know. Um, and from time to time, uh, th we were joined at lunch by uh, David Cornwell John le Carre, in other words oh right uh, I recall him as a rather s silent uh, presence, he was rather older than us, or at least older than some of us um, I went to the bar a few times I didn't develop any traction there, I kept up with our fellow trainees and we used to go out occasionally and I think Chris Willie at that time was uh, going round with the with the girl he was to marry I was envious of Francis Hayden who had been assigned to the inside of R5 I felt that was uh, really uh, much more like the real thing. Another odd thing about um, those years was that we did not have passes, which, which you know, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to think that that was so, given the way in which everyone these days is so over-security conscious or, or totally mm. security conscious yes. it was well, when you went into work it was rather like uh, being given the once over by the guards on the desk as if rather like the, the porter's lodge at the entrance to a college you know they got to know the young gentleman and they were not above uh, having uh, little jokes I recall on one occasion uh, uh, I was uh, telephoned by the desk uh, to say that a uh, Mr. Urine <laughs> had, had come to see me. Oh dear. <laughs> he turned out his name was actually Uren, you know, a Cornish name, U apostrophe, mm. R E N, who was a, uh, an MI5 officer uh, w 
with whom I used to uh, talk about this and that, presumably to do with my desk. At that time I also used to have quite long telephone conversations with a, a lady officer at MI5 with whom we uh, got on well over the telephone, uh, one Sandy Smith, uh, who later married Bob Bradney, and we, whom we are still in touch. I think probably from the my early days, that is the the uh, uh, total survival record. Now the other thing we had to do was duty officer. I mean, these days, being a duty officer is uh, a kind of full-time occupation, and it is, uh, and those who are duty officers are recruited from uh, people who finish their career uh, and are not staying on in whatever other job if they you could apply to become a duty officer, uh, which meant sleeping from home, uh, on, on a roster and, or being away at weekends and so forth. But in those days, it, it fell to all the officer staff uh, to take turns as duty officer, including, amazingly, the inexperienced uh, probationers. Uh, the duty officer's room was in another building, Windsor House, which was a short walk away, and the duty officer room was uh, singularly uh, featureless and not terribly comfortable. And there was the 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 DO log, which we were obliged to study, and 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 there were also the pages of instructions about how to re uh, respond to telephone calls that might come in. And at the beginning, of course, one couldn't remember all these things, and people would ring up and uh, say something, which was obviously a kind of uh, recognition signal. And uh, one of the answers you had to give, I recall, was, I am a colleague of Mrs. Bromley Fox. Oh, my God. <laughs> On another occasion, when I became slightly more confident, I had a call from the MOD duty officer, and I said to him, I, I'm sorry, I, um, uh, can I ring you back when I found out who I am? The things did happen, however, and the highlight of of my time uh, as duty officer was in April 1956 when mm. Commander Crabb uh, attempted to uh, swim down at, under the keel of a Russian warship in, I can't remember which harbour, uh, on some intelligence mission to examine something there. And and disappeared, and it was a great scandal at the time. Oh, and uh, uh, I had had no briefing whatsoever that this operation was taking place, and was constantly somewhat taken aback by all the absolute frenetic activity that developed um, between the various agencies. And at one point I found myself talking to the Chief Constable for Hampshire. It come the morning, I handed over the log. I can't recall. No, I didn't. I didn't think I contacted anyone. I just did what I had to do. So on a later occasion as duty officer, I got the, the Chief out of bed for something. Uh... But I'll come to that at the appropriate time. The other thing about the uh, the uh, duty officer, you could either choose to have a cold evening meal on a cold plate of ham and lettuce and stuff uh, placed in the room by the 
staff at the Kent.